What up, gangsters? So there's a good chance if you're watching this video, it's because you went on YouTube and searched how to restore cast iron, be it a skillet, a pot, whatever. Today I'm gonna break it down for you. Um, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. So here's the thing, you can take 12 people and ask them, hey, what's the best way to restore cast iron? And you're gonna get 36 different answers. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Everybody's got their opinion. The best product for restoring rusted out, nasty cast iron is called a vapor rust. You can buy it in small quantities or big quantities. It's reusable. It's uh, not organic, but like it's not harsh chemicals and stuff like that. It, it might even be all natural, I, I don't remember, but it's, it's better than like acid and stuff like that. I did not have any when I started what's in this tub. So in the tub is vinegar, 75 to 25, okay? I put cast iron, skillets, pans, whatever, I honestly don't know what's in this container. They have been in this container for just shy of a year, about 10 and a half months. Because I put them in there, I meant to get around to it, and then quite frankly, forgot all about them. So the likelihood that the vinegar has eaten my cast iron, I, I think, is slim to none. I'm not a scientist. I don't know what's in there. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know how much work it's gonna take. Let's crack this bad boy open. This ought to be interesting. I'm gonna show you what it looks like in case it's not showing up on here. Look at that. That is, that is just yummy. Oh yeah. That's good stuff. Go grab some gloves. Let's see what we got. what it looks like right this second. Yeah, oh, it's dripping. So what I got here is a Scotch-Brite pad. It's a 3M. Couldn't tell you how much grit it is because it's been sitting around forever. And I'm willing to bet that last summer when I would, did the last one, this is probably what I used. Now what I'm gonna do is Every now and then, I'm just gonna dunk this in the bucket just to get it wet, get a little bit of the gunk off. Now the reason vinegar is so popular is because it's cheap and most people have it around their house already. I mean, you can buy a whole gallon of Walmart brand vinegar, I think for like 80 cents. It's under $2. At least it was last time I had a iPhone. But a vapo rust, I mean, it just melts off. It's just the greatest stuff. <laughs> that could have been worse. Yeah. Woo. No splashy splashy with the burny burny. I think what I'll do is get these mostly cleaned up with this. Set them to the side on this tarp I got over here. And then we'll get out the flapper disc and really have some fun. I just like saying that. Flapper disc. Flap, 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 flapper disc. One is the loneliest number that you'll ever know. Ew. For the record, it is not this messy of a process if you don't wait a year to do it. If you haven't figured this out yet, at whatever point in life you're in, you get out what you put in. Now this one's on the smaller side of what I will typically use, but it's great having a camping kit. You wanna season these, you wanna clean and season these immediately after you're done restoring them. Don't let them sit. The rust will be back on there, like before you know it. Like if you let it sit overnight, you'll be doing this all over again tomorrow. This one's cleaning up real nice. So far, I've avoided getting it on my skin. I really don't know how I'm managing that, but it's bound to come to an end eventually. See, remember when I said I don't even remember what I had? 
That's a flat iron. Literally didn't know that was in there. Oh, see, see? I said it wasn't on my skin, and what was that? 30 seconds, now it's on my skin. That wasn't even on purpose. You really should do this outside. Like the smaller one, this kind of, this one almost kind of came out ready to go. Okay, now that it's all been through that quick little process, um, and again, they soaked for a year, so I mean, I'm gonna have to go crazy. Uh, blood right through. I am going to clean my hands off, grab the grinder, switch into my other gloves. We're gonna have some fun with the grinder. Now, if you're a girl watching this, you might be going, <gasps> his wife's gonna kill him. He's got a towel out in the garage. Well, I'm single, ladies, and it's got a hole in it. This is my towel. Leave me alone. A commonly used phrase around my garage is fix, make, or modify. It is not recommended that you apply this motto to power tools. Now, excuse me while I apply this motto to a power tool. Unless you're a total dolt, put on your safety glasses. I don't want to hear none of that. I'm a man. I don't need a metal in your eye sucks. Don't be an idiot. Yeah. This video brought to you by OSHA. As in, oh shit. <laughs> Giddy up. Now I will tell you as I do this, looky there. As I do this, I am only worried about flapping off cooking areas, areas I have to hold or areas that could like fall into the food. In other words, I'm gonna focus on the cooking area way more than anything else. It doesn't need to be perfect to me. You can make it perfect. You can spend a lot of time. I want to be functional. So I don't need it to be perfect. I need it to be clean. The handle again, I'm not looking for pretty here. The only reason I spend a lot of time, not a lot of time, but equal amount of time as the cooking surface on the heating surface is because you want the heat to be even, effective, clean. This is just as important as here. functional now what I will do I'll show you in just a little bit here is I will take some sandpaper light sandpaper and clean water and I'll kind of go over this but I won't put a huge amount of effort into it what you see here is pretty much what you will get until I season it so over here it goes next You should wear a respirator or a mask when you do this. However, I'm sick of masks. Anybody who's ever dealt with rust on metal will tell you, eradicate it or it'll come back. If you're gonna use your cast iron or at the very least keep them maintained, i.e. seasoned, you're gonna be fine. I've got cast iron that I've done this way plenty of times. I think it's used maybe once a year, but I keep it seasoned. Keep it seasoned, you'll be fine. These smaller ones are more of a pain in the butt. Yes, they're smaller, so there's less work to do in theory, but they are harder to get the flapper wheel in places. You can do this with a Dremel, but Dremel is really not meant for this. And unless you're doing like one piece, like if this is all you're gonna do, sure, you could use a Dremel if you don't have a grinder, but 
The grinder is a much better tool, more effective, it's built for it. And this one is a Hyper Tough or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, Hyper Tough, Walmart, I think they're what, $14.99? Go buy a grinder. Well, that one wasn't nearly the amount of work I hyped it up to be. Got in pretty much everywhere pretty easily. Okay, due to time constraints, I decided to skip showing you how I cleaned them. But honestly, it's just hot water, a nylon brush, no soap or anything. Just use the nylon brush. You're just getting off the debris that's left behind. And then dry it with a paper towel. Um, you can use like a hand towel. I like using a paper towel. I don't want to leave any fibers behind before the uh, seasoning process. We did have one casualty. When I picked this one back up from where it was sitting, I was real happy with this one too. The handle came off. Like literally I just picked it up and the handle came off. So I suspect it's not my fault. <laughs> I wonder if leaving it in the vinegar for years what did it, but Quite frankly, vinegar, I don't see eating cast iron to the point of failure. If you look at this, it's pretty thin. Um, and this one says made in Taiwan. I'm guessing that this is probably just a cheaper cast iron skillet to begin with. I mean, look at how thin that is also. Um, I won't even bother attempting to repair this. I don't even know if that's like a thing. But what I will do is keep this because I will now use it for melting lead, like fishing weights and stuff like that. It just became a garage pan is what it did. So a little bummed about that, but that's okay. So I'm going to pull out the grill, get it fired up, and show you how to season these bad boys. I tell this is a very dirty job. The wind has gotten pretty full on crazy, but like I said, you got to season these the same day that you do this. And I like to season mine in the pellet grill. Now, the reason for this. One, I love flame open fire cooking. And so the whole like flavor, all of that, the aroma, I just, I love it. It's my favorite way to cook. The second reason I like doing it is it's very effective and it doesn't stink or heat up the house. So I'm gonna get this thing fired up and we'll get on it. All right, y'all, they've been in the grill here for about 20 minutes and the color change has started. So I'm getting ready to oil them. I'm gonna show you what I mean about the color change. Normally I don't pay any attention to how long it takes. I kind of did that for you, but. So, you can see how the color is definitely changed. They're darkening up. Some of that's because of the smoke, but even if you do this in your oven, you're gonna see the same thing. They change color as they go along. So what I got here, regular old paper towels and some peanut oil. And I'm gonna grab one of my mitts over here. These are Oklahoma Joe mitts. These are made for smoking and handling stuff in the grill. Now I will tell you right now that if you put these on and start handling hot stuff, you're gonna get burned. Because <clears throat> the surface here gets hot very quickly and out of nowhere. You'll be holding something hot, you'll think you're good to go, and then all of a sudden you'll be getting burned. Not a real fan of these. What I do with them is I use them like that, and they work very well. As long as your hand's not in them, they seem to work fantastic. I always forget that I can go higher with this thing. I'm always bending over and talking into it. But I need to be down just a hair. I'm gonna pull one out, set it there, show you what I'm doing. Show you what this bad boy looks like. See if it's is it auto focusing. Yeah, we're in a, kind of a weird spot. Ooh, almost caught myself in the face with it. Don't want to do that. You don't want to go too heavy on the oil. You want everything coated. Be careful as you spread it around with paper towels. The heat does come through it. Fold it over a bunch of times. You don't want to go too heavy on the oil, but you do want to make sure everything gets coated in it. Quite frankly, I'd rather over oil and have it run off and cook off in the grill and not use it up. You're oiling everything. 
You may find after baking it, you've got some loose debris, just get rid of it. Put it back in. This time I put it face up. See the oil? Get it all spread around. Every inch. I'm gonna wait about 10 minutes and then I'm gonna flip them over. 10 minutes later, woo, it's warm in there, boy. See you in 10. Whoop out! Time travel. All right, I'm gonna shut the grill off. Oh, yeah, look at those. That's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah. No, well, you can see that. Oh, yeah, smoking. Woo, it's getting warm. Woo. Ain't she beautiful? Now what I'll do is I'll let them cool completely down. I will uh, wipe them with a clean paper towel first, make sure there's no debris left over. Then I will hit them with a little bit of uh, oil and I'll be all set. That's pretty much what it takes. Let me flip this bad boy around here. That's what that one looks like. Not nearly as pretty as when it's first uh, hit with the grinder, but it'll work perfectly in my camping kit or in the house some need to get used in the house there they are <clears throat> like i said you can spend a very long time with these if you want to and get them absolutely perfect that's not what i was going for but the technique is the same it's just the time invested is really the only difference so let these cool and I'll be done. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this helps you out. Don't forget to click subscribe. It's down there in the corner and check out other videos. Blah, blah. Check out our other videos. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or what your methods are and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Well, we hoped you enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more great videos from the Penguin Outdoors YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe. And while you're at it, hit that little bell so you get notified when new content is available. Please leave us a comment down below and let us know what you thought. And don't forget to hit that like button. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.